Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Project Zomboid and to our short survival series where Wesley Plummer's vehicle here is still working, which is fantastic. However, it's 7.40 p.m. at the moment, and we need to get a move on. We're going to start today by reading this little map that we picked up in the prison in the last, and it's a map of Louisville. That's great, but that doesn't really help us all that much, as if we have a look at our actual map here that Wesley has, we can see the prison that we came from, the small gated community that we drove past in the last, and Louisville is all the way over here. Now, if we want to try and get to some form of safety. Wesley is going to need to try and leave Knox County behind. And so that's going to mean leaving through one of these various different directions here. The river isn't going to help us, unfortunately, because Wesley doesn't know the first thing about piloting a boat. But driving off into the distance here down to the southwest, that's probably his best route out. But he's not going to be able to do that while he's hungry, while he's thirsty, and I imagine once he's tired, he'll be getting tired pretty soon. So we are going to take off away from here because there are still quite a few dead in and around here and we're actually going to backtrack a little bit we're looking for a road that's going to be just off of this one we really don't want to go back to the prison because there is just such a massive massive population there and we're also going to want to avoid hitting zeds wherever possible because any damage to this vehicle uh, runs the risk of it just completely breaking down and that's the last thing that we want or need. Okay, so we've got a farm down here. Well, we've got a field, so that means that farm houses could well be close by. So I'm going to run with that idea as we start to make our way further down here. And we do still have quite a few buildings around here by the looks of things. So not as rural as I would like car park and a fire department this would be an excellent location for us to delve into for equipment and supplies but with the population being so large out here right now i don't think we're going to worry about that so we'll continue on and try and see if we can find some other roads that we can turn down we don't want to end up like that car up there okay here we go let's take this avoid the dead there swerve as we go and see what we can find Okay, that's a little bit quieter. Oh, okay, we've got a friend right here as well. Let's just kind of pull to the side slightly. We are going to stop the vehicle, and we are going to get out. I'm going to try and stay nice and low, because I wouldn't mind trying to put some things in the boot before we actually leave here. So let's just pause things for a moment. We're going to drop a number of things into the back here, and we're actually just going to get rid of this bloody jacket, because that's not going to help us much at all. Okay, I think we have been seen. Oh, well, we do have more friends over here as well. So let's just try and jump over this fence. Hope that we don't have, um, you know, a massive horde waiting for us on the other side. And so far it's actually, well, <laughs> there was actually someone right there. So let's turn around, get ready to face you, get you on the ground as fast as we can. Because it doesn't seem like we have too many dead here and we can really work with that finally got you on the ground let's start stomping on that head of yours there excellent got you pretty quickly we do actually have some painkillers here so let's drop that into our first aid kit and i'd love to grab this hat but uh that's going to be an afterthought because we have another friend to take care of there we go got you off balance let's get stomping and i'm pretty sure i can hear others that are making their way on over here now as well that's okay i think these are the ones from around the other side so this is good. If they just kind of keep on flowing towards us slowly, it means that we have a much better chance of taking them out. Let's go put on our cap here, give us a little bit of environmental protection. Plus, it looks really cool. Okay, all right. So there are a few down there at the moment. What about up here? We're not really seeing any. So let's just try and stay kind of towards this fence line as we start to get closer to this building here. Yeah, we're really not seeing anything up here right now. That's good. There is a body on the ground. It looks like it's been pretty well devoured. Uh, they'll also be able to see us through the fence, but they won't be able to get to us super easily. So, let's get this door open. Okay, nothing immediately here, which is good. And there is actually food around here. And I think that the power is still on. So we're going to take this TV dinner. We're just going to chuck that straight into the oven. And let's go turn that oven on. It's going to slowly start um, 
cooking away. Let's eat those crackers while we are waiting. There's a kettle in empty cooking pot. Good if we want to try and take a fair amount of water with us, but for now we are just going to drink from the source here. Okay, we're feeling much better after that. Ooh, kitchen knife. We'll go and equip that as a uh, primary weapon there. And, ooh, a fresh dead mouse. A can opener and all those cans, that's a massive find for us. It is going to weigh us down a little bit, but we're still within our regular kind of carrying capacity. A bowl of cereal here, fresh. We're just going to eat all of that right now, and we'll probably go and check on our little TV dinner and see how that's going. Wesley, I am happy for you, my friend. It's burnt already? Um, this might have already been cooked. <laughs> um, well, that's unfortunate. Look, we're not desperate right this second. We can just eat some of the canned food here, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I think we'll just fill up the empty bowl for now, just so that we have some water with us. But ideally, we want something a little bit better to carry that stuff in. Some decent books here. Trapping could be useful. Um, but let's check the bathroom first, and then, of course, the bedroom. Don't have anything hiding in here, that's nice. We'll take the adhesive bandage. We'll actually leave that out of our little first aid kit. Uh, we've got some hair dye, some sleeping tablets, and another first aid kit. And it does actually look like there are some things in there as well, so uh, let's see if we can access that. Oh yeah, dropping it on the ground there, we've got a bandage, some alcohol wipes. Very nice. Okay, bedroom time. This is surprisingly quiet. We may be able to try and sleep here. Maybe. I was really hoping for a backpack in there. Alas, we were unlucky. Um, hmm. Do we think this actually has an alarm set on it? It's a possibility. Also, I think we're only checking one side of the um, wardrobe here. We can't get to where the other side is right now, I think. And that's okay. Let's see if we can make our way over towards the other building and hope that they've got something good for us there. It's 20 past 10 at the moment, so we're getting on we are going to start losing light but we still have power so if we need to stay up for a little bit inside doing some work we can but right now i honestly think just a nice sleep could do wonders for wesley peeking inside we're not immediately seeing someone but the door is locked it could be alarmed so that's something that we're going to need to consider if that's the case we just need to grab what we can and get out we're going to close the window and let's get that door open just so that we have a way out. We are gonna close it immediately. It's just so that if we have to dive out of a window, we can come back in through that door without too much trouble. Some more cans. We've got two things of corned beef, and we're actually a little overweight at the moment. The frying pan is not a bad weapon, really, but I think the kitchen knife might be a little bit better for us at the moment. You know what, the, the frying pan, I think we can attach that to our back, yeah. There we go. Uh, let's check the fridge. We've got some beer. Awesome. We're going to go knock that whole thing back. We'll probably eat this entire banana. There we go. That's the beer done. Let's eat that now. And we've got some ice cream here and some packaged corn. Uh, I think we're just going to go for the ice cream. Let's just say eat half for now. We want to try and see if we can get ourselves to the position where we are feeling like really nice and full. And there we go. We are feeling good. Now over here we do have some soap on the counter, this cleaning liquid. We're going to take that because we're going to be able to get ourselves nice and clean here. So we'll wash all of our clothes to begin with. And because we've got soap, that process is going to be much, much faster. Nice, there we go. And let's wash ourselves as well. There we go, I'm feeling pretty good after that there. Now we're probably gonna go back to the refrigerator here, um, or rather to our inventory where the rest of the ice cream is, and we're just gonna eat the rest of that now. The more calories we can kind of pack on now, the better. And I think it's probably been a while since Wesley's had ice cream, so this is really nice luxury eh okay so i think we do have some lights on here we'll go and turn those off and then we'll check out the rest of the place bathroom seems clear okay and tweezers nice we'll put those in the first aid kit for the moment and now the bedroom okay i mean it's quiet a balaclava some earmuffs a scarf um i don't want to get too warm at the moment but I feel like a scarf would be nice. Uh, the balaclava will just kind of keep in here for now. And I think we are going to have to drop some things off because we are a little bit over encumbered currently. I think we'll probably drop off that bowl of water and we'll just keep a bottle of water instead. And we're considered to be like really tired at the moment. So maybe we just 
eat some more of our food here. We'll eat all of those cans of corned beef. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the next one there. Okay, good. And we're within our carrying capacity. Let's go turn off that light. And we're going to try and sleep. It's midnight. I really hope we can make it to dawn. Oh, okay. Well, we've slept until 12 p.m. And you might have heard my reaction to what sounded like an alarm going off. Thankfully, nothing has come in here during the night. So we've got that going for us. But we also most certainly have dead outside. We can hear them. Um, okay, let's eat some peaches. And let's drop off these tin cans. We don't need to be carrying those any longer. Oh boy. This is fine. This is totally fine. Can we just drink from this bowl here? Let's see. Yep. Just have a quick little drink. Okay. I'm not sure if it was an alarm here. Because I feel like the dead would be in here if that was the case. Oh! I mean, kind of are. Kind of aren't. Alright. Alright. Let's just dart this way. I mean, really, that isn't that bad. Okay, we do have one down here at the moment. Are we being followed? We are. All we really need to do is try and get to our vehicle. Maybe it was this that had the alarm go off because we, we do have quite a few dead down there. So the question is, do we want to jump the fence here and run around to our car or just jump the fence and hope? I think we're going to jump the fence and hope. That's the, uh, that's the game plan right now. We'll see if that works. I'm gonna do a little jog here though, just so we have a head start. Don't slip. Okay, there we go. This is fine. This is not fine. Okay, we have more here than I was hoping for. Okay, the car is, um, the car is okay, but we're gonna need to try and get into that as quickly as possible and just get the hell out of here. Okay, get in the car, turn the car on. Turn the car on and let's go. Let's back this thing up. Oh, that was a great little handbrake turn there. Okay, and we are off. Our heart is pumping, but Wesley, you're good. Okay, that looks like there could possibly be a place that we might be able to stay down there, but honestly, we're just gonna keep on traveling west for now, and we need to do something about our temperature. We don't have the temperature turned on in the car, or rather the heating, but we are heating up, so uh, we can't stop here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just drive a little bit further. Is that a backpack? Kind of hard to tell. <sighs> Even more dead around here. Eventually, though, they will start to kind of peter out. Um, we've got a drive-in. A drive-in theater. Okay, um, fun, but not exactly what we're looking for right now. And we've got something else big over in this direction as well. Yikes. Okay, we're definitely... Okay, well, this is a substation. I thought we were coming towards a town. We're not. We're okay. So, let's just look at taking some things off here. Um, okay, the scarf, that will get unequipped for now, because I think that that's going to be making us just too warm general. We can also just check temperature. Like our torso, it's considered to be hot right now, so we can probably do a little bit more. Maybe taking off our lumberjack shirt? We'll unequip that for now. We'll just keep the leather jacket on. Okay, we're considered over-encumbered now, which is unfortunate, but... Hey, this is, this is fine, and that, that's a highway. Okay, I feel like a highway would potentially take us out, out of Knoxville and Rosewood. So that's where we were. Okay, we're just gonna have a look at our car real quick, and we're just gonna chuck maybe our shirt, or even some of our cans of food in here, just so that we can kind of carry other things as well. We'll just leave them on the seat behind us, and we're gonna keep on driving. Hoping that we're eventually going to come across a road that will lead us away from this hell. We've got some pretty big populations around here. And a road that's certainly not going to be leading out of state. And it's very tempting to pick up a lot of speed <laughs> while driving along this highway. But I'm going to try and keep us at a reasonable speed. And we're dealing with the rain now as well. I don't know if that's going to affect our driving at all. But this is starting to seem to be a lot quieter in terms of the uh, population. I think we might actually just be able to take a moment to have a look at our map. Okay, so we can see how far south we've come now. I'm hoping that eventually there will be a road that turns off towards the west. We can hope, can't we? Whoop, okay. We're gonna stop for a second because uh, we just saw something pretty 
useful. We've got campers out here, they're in camo gear, there are shotguns on the ground. Yes, that is very, very useful. And you know what? Let's just do a little bit of that, and then a little bit of that. Come on, let's get pushing. Let's get you on the ground. I know you've got a friend around here still. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, we've got one more that's over there at the moment. Uh, let's just get into the car real quick, and we will get that turned off, just so that we're not uh, burning fuel. Okay. All right. Hello there, friend. Let's just stand at the ready for you. And let's get you down if we can. I know I could probably try and go for the stab, but it's just going to be safer for us to do this. Now, I have been told that, yeah, sometimes it's better for us to actually stand directly over the head, even if it doesn't look right. And this equipment looks fantastic. Like, really, really good. We're going to go and wear those. We're going to wear the gloves. Um, let's have a look at the condition of these things. The hunting vest is like, okay. We can just drop our regular shoes for now. And let's start to head over towards uh, these bodies. Just regular boots. The denim shirt is good. I mean, we don't actually have a shirt on right now. So that's one of the reasons why. Let's actually go for the, the boonie hat. Yeah, this stuff is a little messed up. So I think that you're probably going to be our best bet. Oh, and they are just like camo shorts. So yeah, not going to be much better than what we've got. All right, even so, um, your vehicle does look like it's a little bit roughed up. Uh, I wonder if we can take the tent down. It's a box of ammunition. Yes, please. And, and, okay, they're all shotguns, I think. Um, definitely more than two here. Double barrel shotgun and the JS2000 shotgun. I don't think we have anything that we can use with We've got no shotgun shells. The hunting shotgun might have a little bit better range on it. Hard to know for certain. I mean, we've got a campfire here as well. It's, this is not a bad spot, really. Um, hmm. Let's just head on over towards the vehicle and see what we've got there. Yeah, you can sleep in the tent as well. We can take it down, so we'd want to put that in the back of our vehicle, certainly. Let's just check the back of this one first. Okay, it's locked. You know what? I mean, I would be willing to smash the, uh, smash the window on this to be able to get in. We'll just check the passenger side door as well. No luck there either. Okay, um, I guess it would make more sense to smash the passenger side window, but we're not going to be driving this thing, so I think what we'll do is we'll just get the fry pan out and hang on, can we just like remove grass? No. <laughs> smash left front window. Okay, there we go. Okay, all right, now we're in. Excellent. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Um, excellent. We've got a pistol. Um, we actually do have a holster, I'm pretty sure, so we should be able to put that in the holster. We'll take the box of ammunition, uh, which will probably open up. The alcohol wipes are a definite. Put that in our first aid kit. The adhesive bandages, same deal there. And we'll take a pen, just so we can make annotations to our map. Um, not much in the way of seats here, it's just a two-seater. Um, but the boot should be open now. Oh, no, there we go, you have to click there to unlock it. Right. Okay, moving around here for a moment. We've got a gun case, we've got a damn hunting knife, very nice, a poncho, uh, which would probably be better for us to be wearing right this second. We're going to take that snare trap, definitely. And we do have some animals. Dead rabbit, dead bird. But we've got food right now, so I'm okay with that. Let's go equip this hunting knife here. We've got the pan on our back once again. And... Let's just have a look with this holster. Can we just drop it on the holster with the gun? Not 100% on that, really. We are carrying a bit much, so we're going to try and take some of these things back to our vehicle now. Uh, we definitely want to have at least a shotgun, though, so let's just go grab that for the moment. Okay, and we'll take that back on over towards our car. All right, so we're going to transfer over quite a few things there. We're going to keep the pistol on us for the moment, but... Um, yeah, I think the knife is the main thing that we're going to be using. Ah, oh, I did not see the aviators on the ground there, or shooting glasses. Let's go wear those instead of the reading glasses that we've got on, and we'll just leave those behind. And finally, I did just want to check the uh, camo pants here. I mean, they're pretty much the same as what we have at the moment, although... Yeah, yeah, there's no, there's no difference between them, except these will look cooler, so I feel like we've got to go for it. The jeans we'll leave behind, and the denim shirt, 
is going to give us the prediction that our other stuff was going to. Okay, all right. The rain is really starting to fall now. It is already five o'clock. I think we could just try and sleep in these tents tonight. If we can get a little bit of fuel for this fire here, we could try and cook up um, some of the animals that are in there as well. So one of the ways that we can do that is by scavenging and start searching. We're searching for firewood, so we'll just start moving around like this. If we stay nice and low to the ground, we'll have a much better chance of finding something. So we shall forage and find what we can. Okay, we've already found something over here. Excellent. Okay, we will take the tree branch, put that into our inventory, and of course that's going to make us pretty overweight. Uh, it was two tree branches, so we'll probably take that straight back. We'll just disable that for the moment and just keep it off towards the side. And let's add some fuel to the fire. I mean, it's raining, so it's not going to be easy to keep this going. There is real no shelter for the flame. Uh, but right, let's see. We want to butcher this rabbit. Alright, that was pretty quick. Rabbit meat. Wonderful. Okay, so let's take that on over towards the fire here. Place it in the fire. And let's see if we can start this thing. Um, we'll just add one of the ripped sheets, because I think that'll maybe work as kindling for us. And, oh, okay, so we use this here. Ripped sheets and matches. Okay, we've got our fire going. Uh, will it last, though, is the question. Let's just stay next to the flame for now as it's cooking along and you know what let's go get the other animal butchered for now the dead bird okay and we'll go and take you on over towards the fire as well there we have it small bird meat that's starting to cook now excellent and the rabbit is about halfway at the moment imagine it is smelling good to wesley we've gotten ourselves nice and comfortable by the fire and we're actually warming our hands at the moment which is nice and the rabbit meat is done so let's go eat all of that now. Oh, your feet are a little close to the fire there, buddy. <laughs> it's making me slightly uncomfortable. And it looks like our small bird meat is done as well. So we'll probably just hold on to that for the time being. We don't necessarily need to eat that. And I know it's early, but I imagine trying to get to sleep now might be a good idea. We don't know how long this road is going to go for really and we're not going to turn off on any of the smaller roads i think we're going to try and stay to the highway as much as we can let's see okay we can't sleep yet but this is nice just hanging out here by the fire we don't really have anything that we can use to read right now we could do a little bit of exercise but at the same time that's just going to tire us out this is a survival situation right now wesley isn't trying to focus on his long-term survival this is short term for him he is trying to escape he's trying to get away he is on the run after all actually thinking about it we could potentially take some sleeping tablets to try and get to sleep a little bit earlier because we woke up at midday so yeah it'll take a little while for them to have an effect but once they do we'll crawl into one of these tents and call it a day oh okay looks like we can try and sleep now so Let's go, Wesley. Okay, and we actually had to take some more sleeping tablets because we woke up around about one o'clock in the morning. It is now 5.40 in the morning. The rain has stopped and we are feeling okay. We are ready to continue on our journey. So uh, let's just do a last little double check here and make sure that there isn't anything we want. The gun case that's in here, can we wear that on our back? We can't, but we can carry a gun with it. Uh, it's probably also going to be worth us taking down the tent here and putting that in our boot so that we can carry that with us. And I'm looking forward to making use of this uh, combat knife a little bit more. All right, tent kit, let's go put you in there and there's still quite a bit of space for us in here so that's nice also oh i didn't check to see if there was gas in the other vehicle so we'll take this just in case the empty gas can equipping that as a secondary let's head on over all right let's see what we got here siphon gasoline okay looks like there might actually still be something in here awesome okay i'm not sure if we still have gas left but we'll just quickly make our way across here and put what we can into here there we go excellent all right let's just go double check and yep there is more that we can take excellent that seemed like a smaller amount but i'll just go double check ah uh, yep that's the last of it okay good so then let's go drop that back into here and i think before we get going we will eat our small bird at least maybe half of it for now 
and then we'll have another half later. I probably should have put the snare out overnight, that would have been a smart thing for us to do, but... Well, we were thinking about other things, weren't we? Okay. Vehicle has started, and we are near full. That is a fantastic thing to see. So, we're gonna spin around, pick up some speed, and continue on our journey. Got a nice burnt out van here. Dangerous. Yeah, what we really want to avoid doing is plowing into something while we are moving along here at top speed. So, I'm gonna try and stick to. Oh, hello. My god. Okay, we're fine. We are fine. <laughs> I was going to say I'm going to try and stick to the middle as much as possible. We have another roadblock here. Interesting. Um, damn, we really hit that harm. Um, what is this then? Stormax? Okay, it could be a logging yard, potentially. But it is a road leading to the west, and it's kind of the direction that we want to be going in right now. There's also a considerable number of Zeds rocking around here. And, oh boy, we have ourselves a town. I wasn't expecting to run into a town, but here we are. So we are just going to try and dodge and weave through the streets as best we can, avoiding the dead. It's a nice little uh, fire truck there. And, oh, we can see why they arrived. This is fine. This is fine. And is it? We've kind of reached the edge of the town. I think we're going to have to continue going further south. So spinning the vehicle back around. Oh, We've got a broken window. Okay, well it's not on our side of the car, so could be worse I suppose. Dodge and weave, dodge and weave. All right, and turning west again. Our heart is pounding right now, and that's the end of the road. That's not what we want to see. No siree. Okay, um, and this car is not fast <laughs> on grass like this. Now we do have this fence that's just kind of going along down towards the south for a long ways. I'm wondering if there could be train tracks down here. I'm kind of just surprised that this whole area is fenced off right now. I mean, why? Let's just stop the vehicle for a moment. Check our map. Yeah, hard, hard to tell, honestly. Maybe we just try and make it back towards the highway. I think that's probably the safer option. But we can't always go for safe. We are going to have to take some risks when it comes to navigating the country. For now though, we are just going to try and see if we can get back towards the road. And that's going to mean going back through the town right after we've just stirred them all up. Yeah, we're much, much faster <laughs> on the regular roads. Jeez, and it's kind of unavoidable. We are going to have some impacts here, but I'm, I am trying to avoid them. <laughs> Believe me. All right, here we go. Back out onto that main street. We'll kind of stick to the sides as much as we can. And then we've just got to weave back through here. Easy as pie, right? Oh, so close. Okay, I think we're getting close to the main highway again. Yep, okay. All right, there we go. So, <laughs> back down. And I really don't think... What is that? March Ridge. Okay, March Ridge, uh, we're passing you by. I was gonna say, I really don't think we'll be turning off unless it looks like it is a main part of the highway. Like this, like this, that's what we're looking for. Okay, excellent. To the west we go. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, we've picked up some pretty serious speed here. Okay. Yep, all right. We're going to be more, more responsible now, because that was not a reality that I was uh, expecting. Surely, no one is going to be parked right in the center, but no, no, I, uh, <laughs> I've been wrong. This car has been an absolute champion. You know what, just for the moment, we're going to keep this closed. I think that's going to make it a little easier for us, and look at that. Okay, the road is uh, diminishing. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> this is making a lot more sense. Yeah, this is everyone that has tried to leave, tried and failed. And I imagine that this is something that is stretching on for miles and miles. And I'm also imagining, oh, we can go further. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, are, are we at the, no, we are not at the edge of the map. Um, okay, that's, 
I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting existential dread for Wesley as he reaches this point where um, there doesn't seem to be much of anything out here. (laughs) Just this endless prairie. The road ends and nothingness lays beyond. How far through the nothingness does Wesley drive? Well, as far as he can. We're going to explore this mystery together and there are there are some artifacts of reality here these small patches of trees and whatnot but it's mostly this uniform nothingness has wesley ever tried to leave knox county before i imagine not uh and it looks like we have more trees here now okay let's move around them where we can it's a little slower going but we are still going and we are starting to encounter far more trees than before. Not so many that we can't navigate through them yet. It's been another long, long stretch of driving through this and uh, <laughs> we, we continue and it's opening up yet again. I will be checking our map in a moment, just once we get past uh, a few more of the dead here. Okay, there's still a few of them around here, but we are going to take a moment We've made a decent distance, but we still have further to go, so let's continue. (laughs) Okay, and we've made it. We have made it to the edge of it all, towards freedom, and... And into the void, Wesley goes. And with that, I'd say our challenge with Wesley for the moment is complete. Now, every single survivor is going to have different victory conditions. For Wesley, getting out of Knox County, that was certainly it. But perhaps in the future, he'll need to return. The prison beckoning once more. But that journey shall come at another time as there are more challenges for us to undergo first. More survivors to uh, survive. And so I hope you will join me in the next episode as we continue our short survival series and as we start with a new challenge and a new victory condition. And as far as those conditions go, I would love to hear your suggestions as to what you'd like to see work towards. And obviously, they will vary from challenge to challenge. As right now, I'm currently working my way through Pillow's random scenarios. And some of the scenarios we have to look forward to are things like entering Knox County, the hospital wake up challenge, almost naked and afraid, abandoned soldier, last ditch security, the final flight and fire sale. Please feel free to pause if you would like to see the full description for each of those challenges. But yes, congratulations to Wesley Plummer, our first victor. It took two days and two hours for him to escape, and he did so after so many failed before him. And so, with that, I ask you all, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon, you have all been awesome, and until next time, stay tuned.